Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to share hard drives and folders over your Wi-Fi. To do this, we'll be using Samba and Docker. Samba is a software that lets you share multiple folders over your network, and these are called network shares. You're able to customize the permissions for every share, so you can make sure that no one has excessive permissions and that only authorized users can access the data. Docker is a tool that lets you run applications that others have made or you have made, and they will run in their own environments, separate from your computer, so you can ensure that it is isolated from the rest of your computer. I recommend that you have some basic knowledge about Docker and Docker Compose files. You're able to run this on Windows, Mac, and Linux, but I'm going to show you how to do this on a Raspberry Pi. On Linux, make sure you've installed Docker and Docker Compose correctly, not just by running sudo apt install docker or whatever. You can search up online how to properly install it for your device. After the tutorial, I'll show you how to connect to the Samba shares on all of your devices like your phone and computer. So let's start the tutorial. So right now I'm in my home directory. What I'm going to do is just go into the optional directory and I'll make my container there and my image. So first we're going to have to make our Samba image. So first let me just make a new directory. I'm going to name that custom Samba underscore image. Let's cd into that. And now whenever you're creating a docker image, we have to make a docker file. So sudo nano docker file. All right. So this is what our docker file is going to look like. We're going to base it off of Alpine. So we type from in all caps Alpine and we'll take the latest one. Then we're also going to run a script every time this container starts up. So we're going to copy a script. So let's do copy and then we'll name it create dash users dot sh. And then we'll just copy that to the root folder. So that's what it should look like. Now for the run statement, we're going to first run apk update. I'm pretty sure apk is the package manager for Alpine. Then we're going to run apk add Samba to actually install Samba. Then we're going to make the script that we're going to add executable because without that, it won't be able to run. Okay. That's all we need to put for run and we'll make a new line. And then the command that it runs every time it starts up will be sh, which starts the script. And also we're going to make the directory where all your shares are. We're going to make those, you know, accessible to everyone and writable for everyone. So for me, I'm going to store all of my shares in slash mount. If you don't have this and you might run into some writing issues and you won't be able to write into some of your folders. So I'm going to place all of my shares into slash mount and then I'll run this chmod dash r777 which makes it writable for everyone and then slash mount. And then the last command we're going to do is sleep infinity. We're putting this here because after the script is over and it does this, then the container will just end and we don't want that to happen. So. We'll put sleep infinity here just to pause forever, but Samba will still work fine. Now we're just going to save this. So control X, Y, and then enter. Now let's add the script to add all the users. So sudo nano create users sh. Now let me just copy that in here and I'll explain what it does. I'll leave this in the description, but basically we're going to give this container a couple of variables. One of them is going to be the user count. And let's say we have two users user one is equal to something password one is equal to something user two is equal to something and password two is equal to something so what this is saying is so let's say user count is two it'll run this thing two times for each user so on the first run i will equal one and then what this is trying to grab is user one and this is trying to grab password one then it'll go ahead and add user it'll add the user to the container and then it'll add that user to samba then in the next run, I will equal two, and then this will grab user two, and this will grab password two, and it'll do the same thing. Then it'll exit out of the for loop, and then it will start the Samba service with SMBD. I hope that explained everything, and I'm just gonna control X, Y, and enter to save it. And now we're actually done with the image. So now let's build it. Okay, now to build our image, what we're gonna do is type docker, and then image, build, dash T, and then you'll put the name of the image. Dash T signifies you wanna name it, so I'm just going to name it Samba and then you put where the directory is of the Docker file. For me, it's in the same directory, so I'm just going to put period. But if you aren't in the same directory, you can just put the actual location of it like this. But I'm already in the same directory, so I'm just going to put a period. Then just let it build. For me, it was super quick because I've already run this before. But for you, it'll update the repositories and install Samba. Now let's actually create the Samba container. We just created the image. Now let's create the container. So I'm going to go back a directory and I'll make a directory called just Samba. Now let me change into that. We actually have nothing in here, but first what I'm going to do is just paste in the actual Samba configuration file. 
the default configuration file that shows up when you install Samba. Now we don't actually have Samba installed, but we can just go online and search for the example configuration file. I'll leave a link to it in the description, and I'm just going to paste that into the directory. Okay, so let's put the SMB configuration file here, so sudo nano, and I'm just going to paste that here. It's just a default configuration, I didn't add anything to it yet, so let me just save that. And now let's just make our docker compose file. So sudo nano docker dash compose dot yaml or yml, it doesn't matter, docker accepts both. And now to start off for a docker compose file, we have to type services colon, and we're going to put samba, and then another colon, and then two tabs. And now we're going to put container name as Samba. You can put whatever you want. And then if you want to put this container into your own network, you can do that by specifying the network mode. But I don't have one on this computer, so I'm just not going to do that. Then the next thing we're going to specify is the image. And it's the one that we just made. So I'm going to put image colon. And then whatever you named it, I named it just Samba and then colon latest for the latest version. So if you ever make changes to your Samba image, it will take the latest one. So now we're going to specify the ports that are going to be mapped to the container. So let's just do ports and then we have to do three tabs now, then a dash and a space. And then you'll put the first port 445 colon 445. What this is saying is port 445 on our computer is going to be mapped to 445 on the actual container. So any requests going to 445 on this computer will be sent to 445 on the actual container. So if this number was something different like 45, then any requests sent to port 45 on this computer will be sent to 445 on the actual container. But we're just going to keep it the same because it'll be a little difficult if you want to change the ports of Samba if you want to try connecting to it on other devices. So it's just much more simpler to just keep the same ports. Then the next port we'll need is port 139. I think only Windows uses 139 to connect to the Samba share, but I don't really know. But just keep both of these open or else you might run into some issues. And then we're going to configure the volumes. Now we got to do three tabs. And then our first volume is actually going to be the configuration file. This will be mapped into the container. So we'll put a dash space and then specify where your actual Samba configuration is located. For me, it's in slash optional slash Samba slash smb.com. I just created mine, you can see right here. It's right here. And I'm in the optional slash Samba directory. So I just put location for this. Then we're gonna map that to where Samba looks for the Samba configuration file by default. And by default, Samba looks at slash etc slash Samba for the configuration file. So that's where we're going to put it. Then our next volume is going to be our actual share. Your share can be located anywhere on your computer, but in the image, we told it to make slash mount writable for everyone. So it doesn't matter where it's located on your actual computer, but when you're mapping it inside of the container, you must map it to somewhere in the mount directory. For me, I'm just going to keep it the same and this is what I'm going to do. That's where my share is located on my computer. And I'm going to mount it to slash mount slash admin share. Now this is what's on my computer slash mount slash admin share. And this is where it's going to be inside of the container. So this folder can be wherever you want. But inside of the container, I made it so that it should be in the mount directory. Then our next one is going to be in the same place. But it's something like this. And we'll mount it to the same place too. Now we're not done yet, we have to pass in some variables like the usernames and the passwords. So go ahead and type environment, and then three tabs, a dash, a space, and then we'll put in our user account. It's going to be two for me. User one is going to be admin. Password one is going to be one, two, three, four. User two is just going to be Madhu. And then password two will be four, three, two, one, just for this demonstration. And I'm going to set restart to always. So if it ever stops randomly, it'll just restart back up. And if your computer shuts off and you turn it back on, it'll restart too. Or you can also put unless stopped and then your computer will always start back up unless it was stopped manually. Actually, I don't think it's underscore. I think it's dash stopped, but I'm going to just change it to always. All right, now we can save this configuration file. And now the last thing we have to do is configure our SMB dot configuration file. So I'm going to make some space at the top. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. Alright, so this is just your basic configuration for what each share should look like. And there's not really that much you need to put there. The only mandatory thing you need to put is the path to the actual location of the folder or hard drive. And this is the location to where it is inside of the container and not on your computer. So I'll just put the path there. And then for the optional things, if you want it publicly shown on your network, then you can put yes or no. I keep it as no because all the devices on my network don't need to know that this Samba share is there. And then for the valid users, you don't have to put this. 
If you don't put this, then every Samba user on your computer will have access to the share. But if you only have like one Samba user that you added to Samba, you don't need to put this at all. And then for the write and read list, you just put what users should have what permissions. And read only, most people would put no, but if you only want the share to be read only, then you can just put yes, and then no one will be able to edit files. That's only the basics, there's a lot more you can do with this configuration file. I'll set the path to so where it's located in the container, not where it's located on your system. If you mounted it to the same place on your computer and on the container, then it'll be the same location, but just keep in mind, this is where it's located inside of the container. I'll make public no. Now I'm going to do my next share. Okay, now I'm done with my configuration file. I'm just going to save this. Control X, Y, enter. Okay, now we can actually start up our Docker container. So make sure you're in the same directory as this Docker compose file. Then what you're going to do is type Docker compose up to start it up dash d to make it run in the background and also dash dash force recreate if you ever want to make changes to your container and you ever want to start it up again you can type dash dash force recreate to start it up again and recreate everything i just always type this because there's no harm in doing so so even if this is your first time starting up the container i just run dash dash force recreate it's just a habit then i'll click enter and now it's going to pull the Samba image we made and it's going to turn it into a container with the configurations that we made to the docker compose file. So mine's already done, so I'm going to try connecting to it. Let me just connect to it. So I'll show you what to do, smb clone slash slash your username at 10.0.0.78 or whatever your username is. So let me just try connecting. And I should see two folders pop up, okay. So let me first try connecting to admin share. And it'll ask me for the password, so let me fill this out. And I think the password is 1234, then connect. Now I should be able to write stuff. Let's just try this out. Okay, it works. 1234, save that. And let's see if it's put that into the actual share on the Raspberry Pi. So mount admin share and then txt.txt. Now let me try deleting this file and see if it deletes. Okay, so I deleted it here and let's try that same command and now it's to say, yeah, okay, it works. There is no such file or directory. Now, let me try connecting to the other share on this uh, account to see if they'll let me in. Because I set it to valid users as only as Madhu, so it shouldn't let me in here. Okay, it just didn't let me in. Now, let me try connecting as the Madhu user, and then it should let me in instantly. And then let me try creating a file, and then we'll put in there, this is a test. And now let's see if that shows up in the share. Now it pops up, so I think everything's good. Let me just try deleting that too and see if it'll let me... And now we'll see if it actually deleted. So yeah, it works. Honestly, I think Docker is a better way to set this up because we won't have to worry about permissions because you'll set the permissions inside of the container. So you don't have to mess with the permissions outside of the container. So anyways, now I'll show you how to connect to the Samba shares on any device. There's two ways to connect to these shares on Windows. So the first way is mapping it to a network drive. So it basically acts like an actual hard drive connected to your computer. And to do that, click on this PC in File Explorer, then right click the this PC, and you should see map network drive. Or you can also just go to the File Explorer, click on computer at the top left, and you can map a network drive from there. Then you can select the drive letter, and then to add it, you have to do two backslashes, and then the IP address, and then the share. Then click finish. Then I'll ask you to log in with your credentials. And now it'll open up in a new window. And you can also rename it because it might be named weirdly. I'm just going to disconnect it now and I'll show you the second way, which is adding it as a shortcut. So right click anywhere on your desktop or in a folder, and then new and shortcut. Then do the same thing, two backslashes, the IP address, and then the share. Now click next and it'll ask you to log in again. Now click OK, and then you can name this shortcut. It'll also let me write files. On macOS, all you need to do is right click on the finder icon in your taskbar. So once you right click, click on connect to server. And then what you need to type is smb colon slash slash, and then the username at the IP address and then you can put the share name, but it doesn't really matter. 
Then after that, click on connect and you should be connected after you put in your password. Now on your phone, there is a way to do this with the normal files app that comes with your device. I like to use documents by Riedel and I'll put a link to it in the description. Now over here, you're going to click settings at the top left. Scroll down until you see cloud and connections. Then click on that and then click add connection at the bottom. Now add a Windows SMB. This is what the Samba server is. Then go ahead and put in the URL, which is the IP address and the share, and then log in. The title can be anything. You can name it whatever you want. Then you should see the share right here. So I'm gonna click on it and you'll see it works. In the normal files app, if you click browse at the bottom right a couple of times and then you get to the main page, click on the three dots at the top right and then click on connect to server. And then you put in the SMB colon slash slash and the username at the IP address and the share. You can click connect, log in, next, and then you should be there. But if you want to create a text document or edit a text document, you can't even do that in this app. So there's not really many features you can use the files app for, for SMB shares. Anyways, I hope this video helped you set up your first Sama share using Docker. I might be posting more Docker videos in the near future, so stay subscribed and leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video.